Hi, my name is Cece Doucette, and today I'm going to be giving a demonstration of an acoustometer, which is a Wi-Fi radiation meter. And about three years ago, I started learning that there could be potential harm from our Wi-Fi devices, so I started researching it. And I found um, that scientists from all over the world have been studying this for decades. There's a terrific report out available online called the Bio Initiative Report, and it details a lot of ways that Wi-Fi is actually harming us biologically. Um, we'll study that a little bit more in another program, but for today, I just want to give you a brief background. So, Ashland Public Schools became the first in the nation to put together a first step towards addressing this. And what we have in Ashland now in Massachusetts is best practices for mobile devices that basically say unplug and don't turn on the devices when you don't need to be using them. And also turn off the Wi-Fi and the routers when you don't need to be using them. And always use devices on a hard surface, preferably one that's not metal because that amplifies the radiation that comes out of these devices. So we're very proud of Ashland Public Schools for taking a first step in that direction. All of our scientists, however, tell us that the best solution is to do a hardwired device. And so um, I went and I worked with Senator Karen Spilka, who's a wonderful public servant, and she helped to craft a bill called Senate Bill 1222 so we can start addressing this at the state level and perhaps create a model that can then be used throughout the United States. And uh, one of the big pieces that had me puzzled was if this is so potentially harmful, why don't we know about it? And this summer of 2015, Harvard University's Law School Center for Ethics came up with a report called Captured Agency, <clears throat> how the Federal Communications Commission is dominated by the industries, industries it presumably regulates. This too is available online if you just Google Harvard Captured Agency, you'll be able to read this full report there. So I want to extend my gratitude to WACA-TV for having staff come visit with me today and create this uh, public service announcement so that we can help you to understand how to borrow a meter that we have in our library, bring it home, and start to see what kind of radiation exposure you have in your homes and offer a few solutions for how you might remediate that. So I would also like to thank our Board of Selectmen in Ashland. They met with me individually, and I taught them what I've been learning about Wi-Fi technologies. And they granted me a $400 grant to put an acoustometer in the Ashland Public Library. I would also like to thank the Ashland Library Board of Trustees for listening as well when I came in to speak with them. They voted and went ahead and put the acoustometer into circulation at the Boston Public or at the Ashland Public Library. So before I turn this on, let me just tell you a little bit about this acoustometer. The acoustic part means that you're going to be able to hear if there's Wi-Fi in the area. And then we'll also have green, yellow, and red lights display. Um, and for those who really uh, are good with the science, they'll be able to look at digital readings for exactly how much radiation is being emitted by the various devices in our living, work, learning, and leisure spaces. So on the left, this measures the spiked data packets that come through with Wi-Fi technology. So with regular radio waves, they roll in a continuous sine wave, and our bodies can acclimate to that fairly easily unless we happen to be right under the towers. Um, but with all digital technology, unless it's hardwired so that the radiation travels through shielded wires, it's all airborne. And on top of that rolling sine wave with digital Wi-Fi, we have these erratic spiked pulses of data packets coming through, and it's those spikes that are being shown to be biologically harmful, especially to us. So I will turn this on and in my home, I have made the choice to turn off all of the Wi-Fi, all of the routers, so that I'm not exposing my family to these airborne microwave radiation signals. So right here, you see it flickering a little bit green. If it goes into yellow, that's the point at which people who are becoming electrohypersensitive or who get sick from this um, start to feel effects. And then when it goes into the red, that's where science has clearly, clearly proven that there is biological harm potentially happening to us. So 
Um, what I'd like to do is kind of just do a walk through my downstairs to show that it is possible to remediate this in most homes. So I'm going to go ahead and step up. Um, we're going to walk through my dining room and the reason for that is because when I turn the router back on you will see that the Wi-Fi radiation goes through walls, it goes through floors, and um, my router is down in the basement which is below this room here. So right now standing here we're still in the green zone so that's a good sign. And I want to walk over to where my daughter's laptop is as well. And show that right now we have her laptop in uh, airplane mode with the Wi-Fi antennas turned off. And even though it's not awake right now, it would still be pulsing radiation if it were alive. Okay, so I'm going to stop right now. We're going to go turn on the router and we'll be back in just a second. Thank you. When I hardwired my house, I then realized I wanted to turn off the router that came with my triple play with the internet, the cable, um, and the phone service. So I gave Verizon a call to get some advice on how to do that. And it wound up being a lot easier than I was anticipating. The gentleman on the phone gave me my IP address, which I didn't even realize I had one, but he gave me this IP address and if you call up to your internet service provider they'll give you the one for your own account and so we established a password and I can go in and just bring up my whole Verizon account you can do the same thing with Comcast and over here I just do change wireless settings and here we have it so one surprise for me here was that we have not one but two wireless routers in our home um, and so I have them turned off you know as a as a habit I'm gonna turn them back on so that we can go through my house again and see what it might be like in your house right now with all of the Wi-Fi on so you just turn those on and then you hit apply it's gonna make sure that uh, you realize that might cut somebody off if they're connected to your Wi-Fi right now I say okay and then it takes maybe one or two minutes before that all comes back and goes online. So one of the ways that I can check is to take this acoustometer again and I'm now going to turn on my printer. Right now my printer is hardwired but even if it's hardwired there are still there are still wireless settings. So what I'm going to do is go in here and go into wireless and I'm going to say turn it on and you can see as soon as that goes on it starts hitting up my meter. Uh, what I learned the hard way because I was sensing that there could still be something on while I was working in here one day, I went into settings and discovered that although I turned the wireless on or off there's a second antenna in this printer and so I had to go in and turn that off too. Okay so right now I'll turn it back on So what happens is although my computer is hardwired, there's no microwave radiation emitting from that, I didn't realize my printer was uh, not only hardwired but that these antennas were still on and I was sitting here all day doing my work in a sea of microwave radiation that's coming off of this printer. So it's really easy to turn them off. You just go in and you say off. And then because there were two wireless antennas, that one's still on, I got to go in and turn them both off. And the radiation is emitting, so you see it took a couple of seconds for it to come back into the green zone. So that's an easy fix. Just hardwire your computer and hardwire your printer and then go in and turn off the antennas. All right. And then what we can do is go measure our cell phone because I think that's something we've all become very reliant on and we're not saying no technology we're just suggesting that we learn to use all of our technology more safely. So way down here to way up there is like a thousand times more radiation exposure 
And so if we're putting these in our pockets or a lot of girls or women slide them into their bras, this radiation is pulsing constantly and the science is starting to prove that we're now seeing women and girls present with breast cancer. We're actually seeing men present with breast cancer as well from having this radiation on their chest the whole time. If we keep the devices in our pockets, that's not a great idea either because our reproductive organs are very nearby. And there are studies that show that just four hours of Wi-Fi exposure from a laptop has caused DNA damage to male sperm, slowed the motility of the sperm, and uh, made few, fewer of the sperm viable. So we can learn. One thing that's very cool about this is if you go into, let's say, um, Google Maps, you can actually download a map Look at how much radiation is going just as the applications are working. You can actually download a map, get all your nav, and then put it back into Wi-Fi mode, and it will still play out your directions as you're driving along. I believe that's because there's a locator antenna, but it really cuts off the two-way microwave radiation. So you can also use this in your bedroom if you have to use it as an alarm clock, but just put it in airplane mode. If you have your music loaded up, you can listen to your music, but just put it in airplane mode. Um, personally, I don't use mine a ton. I basically leave it in airplane mode and a couple times a day I'll put it on and see if anybody's trying to reach me. But by this point, most folks know to reach me on my landline. So those are some tips you can use to keep a little bit more distance. Um, and again, use speakerphone or use a hollow tube headset because if you put this right up to your head or if you put Bluetooth right up to your head, you're putting these antennas right by your brain and that's not great and you don't want to have them in your bra or your pockets either. Thank you. Another device in my home that took me by surprise is the cordless home phone or the decked phone. And you'll see when I turn this on that it serves almost like a little mini cell tower in your own home. So it sits here pulsing microwave radiation throughout your house night and day. There, I hear, is a German phone that's coming out. I'll turn that down a bit. There's a German phone that's coming out that will only send signal when the phone is activated, but right now in the United States, the phones that we have all pretty much upgraded to are these decked phones. There might be some older cordless phones kicking around, and you could certainly borrow the, meet the meter and measure to see if that does the same thing. Um, but anything that says decked on it is this digital technology with that spiked microwave radiation. So what we can do is, and walking around with this too, it's carrying the signal back and forth. So if you've got this up to your head, it's as bad as a cell phone up to your head. So a good, easy option, we'll get rid of that, is I was pleasantly surprised to find in my basement that I still had my old trim line foam with a ginormous cord on it so I can still be in here getting dinner ready and taking care of things while I have to take a phone call. And you see with that plugged in, actually I think what we're probably experiencing is the radiation that was already airborne from that one is still airborne right now. But we can come back in a little bit and double check this because it'll come down. Oh, there it goes. So it does take a little bit for the air to clear once you've had radiation basically unshielded and airborne in your living space. Okay, and this phone, you know, just a good old phone. It's to totally hardwired, so we're in good shape with that one. So this is a demonstration of my daughter's laptop, which unfortunately we had just bought her before I figured all this out about Wi-Fi radiation, but there are also solutions to be had. So right now, you'll see that this just spikes on its own. This laptop has antennas in it that continually try to make a handshake with a router. Um, and if you were to play a video, or if you're just surfing the net, you know, whatever you're doing, it's going out and gathering data packets. And so, if that is sitting in your lap, then all of that radiation is going right at you. The solution is pretty easy once you know about it. Um, what you need to do is go into your device's settings 
and I'm going into Fios because that's what our carrier is. And I am turning the Wi-Fi off. And it's in airplane mode. So, whoops, that tricky little thing. Okay, now it's off. And you see that it fell right down into that range there. We're back into the green. Now, if we want to use the internet, we just plug in here. This was an ethernet cable. Um, very easy, you can pick them up at Radio Shack or any of the other uh, technology places like Best Buy or um, basically it's a really basic thing and you don't have to pay very much money for it. So you plug that in and then you can go ahead and continue to use your devices and access technology without pulsing up into that red zone like we had done before. On the 17th of January 2016, Okay, so wherever you can, hardwire your devices. For the iPads and the Macs, what you might need to do is buy a little adapter. And my daughter just bought a MacBook. She's up in college. And uh, she had paid about $30 to get an adapter. And on one end, it's got the Ethernet cable outlet on it. And on the other end, it's got a USB port. So you can just plug that into the USB port and get the access that you need to hardwire. Just be sure and turn off all your settings in each device. Um, one other thing I wanted to show is if you have, let's say your cell phone is on in an active mode and you want to listen to music or have a phone conversation using a headset, if you're using a wired headset, that radiation is just going to travel right up the wire and into your head. That's the same concept with Bluetooth. You don't want to be putting these antennas right on your head. But what you can do is science shows that of course, hardwired is always best, but if you need to use it, create as much distance as you can. So if you have your cell phone, set it down over here and you can get a hollow tube headset, plug it in there, and the radiation only travels up to about here, and then it's a hollow tube, kind of like the idea of a stethoscope. And when you put that on, it's not allowing the radiation to travel up the wire. It's working off of the acoustics of a hollow tube. So if you do have to plug into something that is actively using Wi-Fi, at least see if you can try and get a hollow tube uh, headset. Welcome to our basement. We're in the utility closet downstairs. And what I want to do is show you where we have our router. Uh, some folks have them right on their desk or in their living spaces or in their bedrooms. And that should be something to be reconsidered. So I'll go ahead and turn the meter on. And you can see with my Verizon router up there that this, it keeps this maxed out, which means it's giving us even more radiation what, than what this meter can handle. And if people are sitting right there in front of this all day, all night, it does not give our bodies a chance to rest and repair and regenerate our cells as we're supposed to do while we sleep. So um, once you hardwire everything in your house, then you don't even need to have that router on. You can contact your internet service provider and they will tell you how to very easily turn it off. And that doesn't cost anything to turn that router off. So, um, But what's interesting is if we go across the hallway into our guest bedroom down here, if I leave that on, even though it's going through walls and other rooms, then if I have guests staying with us in here, they're still being exposed all night long. So this travels very far out into our houses. And what I've learned recently is that the uh, telecom companies are now putting hot spots on our individual houses. And that allows an even stronger signal going through your home so that people can reach it outside. And that is not an environment that most of us would choose to live in if we knew any better. So by turning off your router, that turns off the hot spot and it turns off the signals that are going through your house 24 7. Thank you. Okay the next demonstration is going to be on the microwave oven. Now this oven isn't brand new but it's really not that old so it should in theory shield most of the radiation that's used to cook food. Um, I just put in a little glass of water in there and I will give it a 30 second and I'll turn on the meter and it keeps it maxed out. Now, scientists will tell us that the further away we are from microwave uh, radiation, 
the better chances that we might not get damaged. So I'm now probably about six feet away from that microwave and it's still up in the high range. So I'm now leaving my kitchen. I'm walking all the way down my foyer and I am heading toward my front door before that falls out of range. So um, microwaves, not a great choice. We bought a really nice toaster oven and we enjoy cooking. I can cook a pie or a chicken in there and then I don't have to use that microwave and expose my family. So that's uh, something to think about. So thank you for touring my home with me and learning a little bit about how the microwave radiation has come to become part of our everyday norm and how we might be able to make some choices around that to reduce or totally eliminate the microwave radiation. Um, other devices you might want to consider looking at are any kind of a baby monitor. If it's not corded, then it is uh, emitting microwave radiation around your most precious package there. And also kids who use gaming devices or adults, hardwired is definitely the way to go. Um, and so just start being mindful. Whatever you use at home that's not plugged in, start thinking about ways that you can plug it back in and still use the technology, but without the harm. This again is called an acoustometer, and if you go into the Minuteman library system and type in acoustometer, it will pop up for Ashland, and it will show whether it's available or on hold, and you can either reserve it there or you may need to call the Ashland Public Library, and they will go ahead and put you on a wait list for it. So I would suggest that when you take it out from the library, talk to your friends and neighbors about this too, because while you have it out, I think you can take it out for a week. Um, why don't you go around to everybody who might have an interest in this and just use it all during that week time period. That'll cut down on the wait list at the library. And if you have any questions or you would like to learn more about this, I've created a research repository as I've begun to learn about all of this science behind it. It's called Understanding EMFs and it's a very simple Google site with a lot of links to the actual science that's out there. Um, this isn't anything I've come, you know, to create myself other than the website. I'm simply connecting the dots so that our citizens can begin to be informed and make choices to reduce their Wi-Fi radiation until our technology companies start responding and building actually safe technology. Thank you so much for your time and good luck.